Hello everyone! You may not be aware, but one of my friends recently won the Pack Puma by opening a War Thunder crate. I did the same thing and won a common skin. So, to make myself feel better, I have decided to study War Thunder crates and see how profitable they really are and whether they are worth buying. A quick disclaimer, this video is for informative purposes only and should not under any circumstances be taken as financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, nor do I have any formal financial education. I don't have any financial education. Before we begin, a quick intro into crates for those of you who are new to War Thunder. Crates, or trophies as they are called in game, are unique to every War Thunder major update and can be earned as a rare end of mission reward or can be purchased on the Gaijin Marketplace for 0.1 Gaijubles. To open said crates, you need the key, which can be purchased on the Gaijin Marketplace for 2.49 Gaijubles a pop. These Gaijubles, or Gaijin coins, are roughly equivalent to 1 USD and hence cost 1 USD to purchase depending on exchange rate, of course. The crates can drop a variety of rewards, with the most common being camouflages, the middle rarity being a decal unique to the major update the crate is named after, and the highest rarity being an entire vehicle, like the aforementioned pack wagon. I'm not jealous at all. Anyway, this got me thinking. How much money, on average, will you make per crate opened? Yes, this started as a joke between us at 12am, but it is now a video thanks to my love-hate relationship with maths. A quick caveat up front. The Gaijin marketplace is essentially a stock market, but for War Thunder, this means prices are prone to wild fluctuations. Due to this, the numbers used and calculated in this video may no longer be relevant, depending on when you watch this video. So, for transparency reasons, and totally not just an excuse to pad runtime, I'm going to start by explaining my methodology and how I arrived at the final numbers. So basically, I started out thinking that it would be very, very simple. All I would have to do is look at the current price of all the rewards, compare that to the chance of getting said rewards, then work out an average return from there. This video would be three minutes long, I'd be done and dusted in two days, and I'd get a bunch of views and recognition, and it'd be huge amounts of fame for very little effort. Sadly, it was not to be. The actual drop chances are very hard to find. Gaijin is about as clear as mud when it comes to disclosing them, and instead labels the reward chances as low, medium, or high. I have scoured the internet and couldn't find any mentions of them online, outside of a few posts on Reddit claiming a rare vehicle has a chance of 0.000001% to drop, which is very likely an exaggeration, so I'm not inclined to use it as an actual source. Due to this, I had to calculate the drop chances manually. Now this is not ideal because it can lead to wildly different results due to small mistakes and biases that may have not been accounted for, but I didn't really have any other choice. To do this, I searched YouTube and talked to my friends to get videos and or testimonies of what rewards they won against what crate they opened, then sorted the results into a table. I collected data on trophies spanning from Operation Locked On until Operation Apex Predators, the current season of War Thunder, if you will. A picture of my results is up on screen, and links to all the videos I watched are in the description if you ever want to go watch the videos for yourself and check that I haven't miscounted my numbers. Now, due to the fact that only a small number of people are willing to open copious amounts of crates, my original plan of breaking down the drops by crate didn't work for the simple reason that I didn't have a large enough sample size of each crate to accurately do so. Due to the sample size constraint, and the fact that every crate has 60 possible rewards, 19 vehicles, 1 decal, and 40 camos, I'm going to assume that all cameras, vehicles, and decals have an equal chance of dropping within their respective categories. By that I mean all cameras are equally likely to drop, as are vehicles and decals. This may not be entirely true because it appears that Gaijin changed the loot crate mechanics at some point, seeing as old videos of crate unboxings show ultra rare and rare cameras. Since this is no longer a thing, I'm going to just ignore all those and just group all cameras and vehicles together. This simplification is to preserve my own sanity while crunching numbers, and it makes sense given this video is supposed to be relevant to today and not one year ago. Now, based on the spreadsheet, the chance of winning a vehicle coupon is 2.58%, the chance of winning a season decal is 7.73%, and the chance of winning a camo is 89.69%. Nice. These were calculated by dividing the total number of vehicles, camos, and decals won by the number of crates opened, and honestly, these percentages aren't as bad as I thought. I was expecting closer to 0.1% for the chance of getting a vehicle, so 2.58 is not bad, all things considered. I imagine the true percentage chance is closer to 2% or 1%, and the chance of getting a camo is closer to 90%, but that's just my feeling. I would like to quickly acknowledge the bias for unboxing vehicles, since I got the majority of my numbers from YouTube. It is unlikely that an unboxing video will be uploaded unless something good is won. 
This is because very unexpected moments in a video, like winning a vehicle, typically spark a lot of comments about it or an issue that it highlights, leading to higher audience engagement and the video getting pushed harder thanks to the almighty YouTube algorithm. Praise be to Susan. Yes, videos showing no vehicles unboxed tend to have a similar effect and also do prove a point, but overall I believe this bias still exists and may have influenced the numbers slightly. Now the part you're all here for, the money. I'm calculating expected immediate sell value, i.e. the maximum value someone is currently willing to pay based on the highest buy order on the market. If there are no buy orders, this immediate value is zero. Here is a screenshot of the spreadsheet. I got these numbers by multiplying the value of each possible drop by the chance of it actually dropping. This drop chance was calculated by taking the percent drop chance for each category and dividing it by the number of rewards in that category, giving the chance of any given reward dropping. Both of these calculations were made much easier by my graphics calculator, but I still spent two days entering all the numbers and trying not to give myself a case of RSI. If you are surprised by these numbers, so am I. Based on this analysis, the best crate is the Imperial Navy Trophy, and the worst is Apex Predators. If you were to open these crates, your expected returns would be 0.32 Gaijubles and negative 0.48 Gaijubles respectively, meaning that you would be actively losing money if you were opening Apex Predator crates long term. This is not entirely unexpected. I was expecting Apex Predators to be the worst, seeing as how cosmetics seem to get more expensive over time due to their rarity increasing. However, based on that line of thought, Locked On should be the most valuable overall, but it isn't. This makes me think that the quality of the skins must also be a factor, as well as the vehicle they are for. The impact of these factors would be very hard to measure since camo quality is subjective, making objective analysis impossible, and there aren't really enough rare vehicles to give a large enough sample size for a proper study. So what can we conclude? Well firstly, if you were to choose random vehicles from your inventory and open them, your expected return would be 0.04 Gaijubles, rounded to two decimal places per crate. And assuming my numbers are correct, if you buy both the crate and the key, your average return is negative 0.06 Gaijubles, meaning that buying a random crate and key is basically guaranteed to lose you money in the long term, assuming prices remain constant, while just buying the key can actually make you money in the long term. Also, please bear in mind that this analysis was done using numbers as of 10th January 2022, and that they are likely to change as time moves on. However, what I have calculated is essentially a best case scenario. I assume infinite buy orders for specific camos at the highest price I saw them when I got the numbers for this analysis. Most of the camos and vehicles only had a handful of buy orders at the price I used to calculate expected returns, with some only having one higher order, and the rest being up to 1.5 gaijubles less than the maximum value, so it is almost guaranteed that if you were to buy a thousand Imperial Navy trophies and keys, you would actually lose money because the pool of high buy orders would dry up. The price would crash due to the sudden increase in supply, and the numbers are assuming a best case scenario, which is unlikely to occur. I also assume that my initial numbers are 100% correct, which they almost certainly are not due to the fact that they are calculated via an experiment with a sample size of 388 crates, which was as many as I could confirm were opened based on my day of scouring YouTube for videos of crate openings, as well as talking to my friends about their experiences and my own experiences in the crate opening world. So overall, despite the theoretical model allowing for a profit to be made from buying certain crates, it is important to realise that these numbers are based on the maximum buy price, not the average, because calculating the average for every single cosmetic decal and vehicle would have taken an ungodly amount of time, and I have a job that I would quite like to keep, so turning up is required. Also, because the price is likely to fall after selling one or two skins slash vehicles, the actual long-term returns are likely to slip below the 2.49 Gaijubles break-even point, resulting in a net loss over time. This makes the War Thunder crates essentially like gambling in a casino. You win big rewards once in a while, but those big rewards total to less than you put in to get one. In conclusion, not worth buying at all, unless you like skins and have lots of spare cash. Well, that's about it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to be part of the meme zone and upcoming community events, join the Discord. There is a link in the description. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay salty, my lemons.